okay, uh, so we sort of went through the uh, relativistic correction uh, in a in some sort of uh, rush. Uh, so uh, let me just outline the uh, basic uh, ideas. Uh, remember that we said that the actual uh, equation that we needed to use uh, for the energy of a relativistic particle should be something like p squared c, c squared plus m squared uh, c to the fourth, which includes the rest energy as well. So what we thought would be reasonable is to uh, use for kinetic energy this thing, uh, which is p squared c squared plus m squared c to the fourth minus the rest energy. <coughs> okay, so assuming that this is again a small correction so that uh, we are not deep into the relativistic regime, uh, so that m squared c squared uh, dominates uh, most of the energy, uh, we can uh, see what the difference between these things are. So it's going to be m squared c squared uh, 1 plus uh, oh, square root of, well, let's see, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, okay, square root of uh, 1 plus p squared c squared or m uh, squared c to the fourth minus 1, and then <coughs> we expanded this for small values of p squared, c squared, or m squared, c to the fourth, which gave us 1 plus 1 over 2, uh, p squared, uh, okay, let's cancel the uh, one set of c squared, p squared, or uh, m to the uh, <coughs> am I doing this correctly? <coughs> Okay, uh, p squared, m squared, uh, c squared, and then minus 1 over 8, uh, p to the 4, uh, m to the 4, c to the 4, please check my algebra, minus 1. Okay, so the dominant terms cancel, <laughs> and we end up with p squared. Uh, or 2m, which is our ordinary, usual uh, term. And then we have this minus uh, 1 over 8, uh, let's see, m cubed, uh, c squared term multiplied by p to the 4. Okay, and so we said, okay, so to the lowest order, in the, as a correction, uh, relativistic correction, we are going to take this term here as the addition, okay, in addition to this p squared or 2m, so it's going to be the first order correction to the energy. Okay, and uh, so what we do is we just group terms in such a way that uh, we are going to get this p to the 4 term. Remember this, our h0 uh, is the ordinary kinetic energy term, which is p squared over 2m. And then there is some potential energy term, v. Okay, and what we can do is we can just group these terms together. So we can say, well, uh, I can look at what uh, H0 uh, 
uh, minus v is h0 minus v is going to give me uh, p squared over 2m. And if I just square this, h0 minus v is going to be p to the fourth over 4m squared, right? So <laughs> looking over here, okay, so this is actually uh, related to my h1. So in place of h1, I can just use this, right? So uh, if, I, if I square this, sorry. Okay, so <coughs> the factor that I need is a one over two mc squared, right? So uh, my h1, is going to be equal to minus one over two m c squared times h zero minus v uh, squared. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm going to be using uh, for uh, my uh, first order perturbation term. It's just a p to the fourth term. All right, so <clears throat> what uh, do I get from this? Well, okay, let me first write it down and then we'll discuss it a little bit. Uh, so the correction to the nth energy level to first order is going to be equal to, okay, the expectation value of this, which is minus one over to mc squared, okay, h0 uh, minus v squared n. Okay, so I'm just going to find the expectation value of this uh, with respect to the nth state, and that's the first order correction in non-degenerate perturbation theory. Okay, so you see, you might argue that I shouldn't be doing that because this is not a set of non-degenerate states. In fact, they are, uh, they have degeneracies corresponding to L and M. So I should really be using for each N a uh, degenerate perturbation theory. But what happens is that we turn out to be lucky because what would we do? We would just get this H1, okay, this whole thing, which is now our H1. And we should be, okay, looking at the various matrix elements of it, okay? In our notation, we were considering this H alpha alpha, H alpha beta, etc. okay? So uh, all these, uh, matrix elements I would need to find out and then find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. But it turns out that these <coughs> ordinary eigenstates already diagonalize this matrix. That's because these things, okay, these Vs are just functions of R, just radial coordinate. So they commute with the angular momentum operator. And because they commute with the angular momentum operator, okay, the angular momentum indices do not bring in, okay, any uh, non-diagonal elements. So I'm, I get that all diagonal. Okay, it's, a, <coughs> it's an important technical point, but okay, so uh, that's what allows me to just use the uh, non-degenerate perturbation theory, which really means that I'm looking at these diagonal elements, okay? Uh, because the matrix is already diagonal. Okay, so I have this. So now I expand this. Uh, so I'm going to get minus one over two m c squared. And over here I have a bunch of terms. Okay, so n and I get h zero squared minus h zero v minus v h0 plus v squared n. 
Okay, these terms are easy. H0 operating on its eigenstate gives me just the energy state. <coughs> this is also easy, okay. Uh, H operating on N, this operates towards the right. That gives me the energy eigenstates. So let's just write them down. Uh, so this is going to be minus 2mc squared. The first term is going to be H0 squared, so that gives me E n squared. Okay, this one gives me minus E n times expectation value of V in this n state. Okay, this one gives me this exactly the same thing, okay, because the n is a constant. Once it's a constant, I can take it to, to the left. Okay, so that's going to be V to the n. And finally, I have V squared. Okay, and that's it. All right, so I'm going to get minus 1 over 2mc squared. Okay, e n squared minus 2 e n. Okay, expectation value of v in the for the nth state, and then uh, plus v squared. All right, so that's what you get. Now, <laughs> some of these things, okay, well, all of them, we actually determined last time. Uh, so what were they? Let me just squeeze them over here. Uh, remember that the expectation value of V in the nth state was just equal to twice En. Okay, En is negative, the uh, energy. So the expectation value of the potential energy turned out to be 2En. Remember, we used uh, Feynman-Hellman theorem to obtain what that was. We similarly obtained what uh, V squared was. Okay, I don't remember the details, but I have it somewhere over here. Okay, it turned out to be 8n e n divided by 2l plus 1. Okay. So, uh, all right, so now I just plug them in. Uh, so you see, uh, everything that I put in is going to be proportional to E n squared. So I can pull one factor of E n squared out. So this will be minus... I have a question. Yes. Um, since n and l are dimensions integers, um, how, is, how are the units consistent in here? Uh, this is E n squared, thank you. It's not consistent unless, unless I square it. Yeah, squared. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to get E n squared, in fact, out of this also. So I have 2 m c squared. Okay, and I have a bunch of terms. 1 minus, okay, this one is going to be 2 E n, so it's going to be minus 4. And this one is going to be plus 8 n over uh, 2L plus 1. Okay. And so that's it. Okay, so I'm going to get a uh, correction term which looks like that. Okay, so uh, I'm not worried about the signs. I guess here, okay. Okay. So it's, you are going to get minus 3, so E and 0 squared, or 2 mc squared, and we are going to get 3 minus 8n, or 2l plus.
plus one. Okay, so that's the relativistic correction. You see, we have used what these expectation values for the v and v squared are at this step. So up to that point, uh, the analysis is actually quite general. Okay, so here we put in the average value of v and average value of v squared for the Coulomb potential for the hydrogen atom. But uh, if you want to do this for some other problem, all you need to do is put in the expectation values associated with that Hamiltonian for V. For example, suppose I have a harmonic oscillator potential. Okay, so if I have a harmonic oscillator potential and I want to find the relativistic correction to it, so the steps up to this point would be exactly the same. <coughs> and then I would need to find the average value of V and average value of V squared okay, for the harmonic oscillator case. Again, the feynman hellman theorem is your friend. Uh, you can determine those uh, easily from the theorem and just plug them in and then you have the uh, correction for that problem. Okay, so uh, in fact there is a problem in your textbook for finding the relativistic correction to the uh, okay to the uh, harmonic oscillator. All right, <clears throat> now that we have this, let's just uh, try to understand the order of these things. I have this E n, okay, the uh, Bohr energies associated with the hydrogen atom and that divided by m c squared. So what is this uh, quantity? Let me look at E10, okay, the lowest order energy. In fact, let me look at a positive version of this divided by m c squared. Okay, so they are both, uh, they have both have units of energy. And let me just put down what my energy uh, for the hydrogen atom was. Okay, so with n equal to one, uh, this is going to be equal to m over two h bar squared, right? And then I have an e squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 squared, okay? And then 1 over n squared, but I'm taking the first one. And then I am going to divide this by 1 over m c squared, okay? So this is energy divided by energy, so it's unitless, right? And <coughs> That means, if I just take those things away, you, you see this looks like the square of something. Uh, so uh, what I will do is I'll write this as, okay, so the one over two is still there. So this is going to be one over two uh, e squared or uh, 4 pi epsilon 0 h bar c, okay, squared. 1 over 100 squared, right? Very good, you are very fast. Okay, so, well, it turns out that this number here, let's just call it alpha, uh, is equal to e squared over 4 pi epsilon zero h bar c is, as your friend quickly calculated in SI, well, in any units, uh, one over 137 dot something, okay, uh, units. So it is something which relates quantum mechanical energy scale for the particle uh, with the relativistic scale and you get something unitless, okay? So some people attach a uh, 
great amount of significance to this, why we have 137 such things. Uh, this is called the fine structure constant for reasons we'll find out in a minute. Uh, okay, and why we have this number, okay, what would happen if this number was something different, this unitless number, okay, it's a matter of somewhat of discussion, okay. Uh, I personally do not uh, believe in much, uh, uh, much, okay, significant content in those discussions. Uh, these uh, numbers, unitless numbers, we, whenever people find them, okay, they uh, start discussing, uh, okay, that there must be some deep meaning in this. So uh, one of the more famous discussions was started by Dirac, who noticed that the ratio of the uh, forces, electromagnetic forces to gravitational forces, which is, okay, uh, gigantic, is also very close to the ratio of the uh, radius of the proton and the size of the universe. Okay, so he thought that there must be some relation between those things because, okay, they are similar numbers, but then people discovered that the universe was growing in size and measurements on the proton size that did not seem to give the same, okay, uh, trend, so, uh, we are stuck there. Okay, in any case, uh, why do we call this the fine structure constant? Now you see, I can reverse this now. So this is equal to uh, one over two alpha squared, right? So E uh, zero one is equal to one over two uh, alpha squared times uh, mc squared, okay, and uh, okay, so these are the ordinary uh, quantum mechanical uh, energies of the hydrogen atom. Now we are looking at corrections. We are looking at corrections and you see the next order thing when you look at this EN1, this E N one. Sir, don't you also have minus in front of one over two? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm just looking at the orders, really. Okay, so this E one uh, to the first order now, the first order correction to that. If you now go over here. Uh, is going to be uh, related in order. Okay, so I shouldn't write equal sign here, but in terms of proportionality, what it is proportional to, <coughs> you see I get a factor here, EN0 over 2MC squared. So <coughs> I have something which is of the order uh, of another factor of alpha, okay, so this is now uh, order alpha squared E1, zero, okay, so it's alpha to the fourth MC squared, okay. So <clears throat> we are going to group the effect of these interactions in powers of alpha like this. So this is proportional to, again, uh, alpha to the four MC squared. Okay, so this order we are going to associate with the fine structure uh, of hydrogen. Okay, what do we mean by fine structure? Well, you see, this is now splitting up the energies. We had these energies which were degenerate. Okay, we had energies which depended only on En, okay, only on N. So they depended only on the quantum number n associated with the energy, and all the L states had the same energies, right? So they all had the same energies, but now you see, when you add this correction, you get this one over two L plus one, which says that 
the energy depends on what L is. Okay, so something that was, okay, so when we are looking at these energy levels, okay, so uh, suppose I have the n equal to one state here, which has the L equal to zero, okay, uh, quantum number, then n equal to two has L equal to <coughs> what? Uh, zero and one, and now the L equal to zero and L equal to one states have different energies. So if I put them on the, uh, okay, on the scale like this, I'll have, an, I'll have different energies for L equal to zero and L equal to one. And now if you look at the transitions, okay, from these states, from one to the other, where you would expect a single frequency. Now you have two frequencies which are very close to one another. So if you just do some spectrum, spectral analysis, okay, of the light that comes out when you excite this atom and look at the light that's being generated. So that's going to be h bar omega, okay, the energy. So where you would expect to find a single line you find out that there are actually two lines. Okay, very close to one another. So you need good equipment in order to, okay, differentiate these two lines. Okay, that's why it's called fine structure. There's some structure here at this frequency, okay, which corresponds to uh, two lines. We'll see that there's even higher order effects, okay, which will split these things even further. Okay, that's called the hyperfine structure. And you, as you can expect, then we are going to get another factor of alpha squared there. So, okay, we are going to look at these things step by step, order by order. Okay, <clears throat> so the relativistic effect uh, is associated, okay, is of the order of the hyperfine structure uh, I'm sorry, defined structure uh, magnitude. Uh, another uh, effect, another such effect is the spin orbit coupling. Okay, so in <coughs> spin orbit coupling, qualitatively, what is happening is that you have the electron, okay, so here's our proton. It sits in the center, and we have the electron going around it, okay, carrying some angular momentum. And whenever we have this rotational effect, okay, the electron going around the proton, okay, the electron effectively in its own reference frame feels a magnetic field due to the motion of the proton around it, okay, and vice versa, of course. So there is some magnetic field associated with this rotation, which will be proportional to the orbital angular momentum. So orbital angular momentum will be associated with some magnetic field at the position of the electron. And then the electron also has its spin inside that magnetic field, and that corresponds to some energy, okay? So there is going to be this <coughs> spin orbit Hamiltonian, which we'll treat as another order in perturbation theory, okay, another first order term, which will have the 